Good afternoon everybody, my name is Maya the King, and today we're taking a look at a game just released on Steam called A Tale of Paper, developed by Open House Games and published by Digirati. The game is not in early access and is currently selling for 20 US dollars. I also wanted to take a brief moment to apologize for my absence lately. School is starting back up for kids, and along with trying to get my kids into a good school, the district apparently is using a new system and screwing everything up, forcing me and my wife to stress out and work extra, extra hard dealing with stupid problems that shouldn't be happening just to get our kids into school, causing us a lot of stress. But hopefully, it should be coming to a close soon, and I can focus more on these videos. Now, enough about my sad little life. On to the video. Now, this game is definitely not something that I usually play. Just putting that out there. However... I have played games like this in the past, and regardless of experience, I can still recognize a good game from a bad one. For those of you who are not aware, this game is one of those side-scrolling, atmospheric, puzzle, platformer kind of games. So immediately upon starting this game, I uh, started running into issues. However, if you'd like to hear all about what's wrong with the game, you'll have to wait a couple minutes because I'm going to go into the positives first. Just wanted to say though, I did run into issues almost immediately. Okay, so have you all ever played Limbo, or what about Little Nightmares 1 and 2? This game is pretty much like those. Side-scrolling, puzzle-solving, atmospheric games with little tips and tricks and cool functions following some vague story you kind of have to put together yourself. So, other than the less-than-ideal start I had with the game, it overall served its purpose. It does have an interesting concept, and it is very atmospheric. Now, while the graphics aren't the best I've ever seen, they are passable. You play as this little piece of paper whose name is apparently Line. I learned that from the Steam Store page. And after finishing his little journey, the game gives you three prequel parts featuring another new paper protagonist. Also learned that from the Steam Store page. In terms of the atmosphere, this game has it in droves. The particular lighting in some areas, along with the shadows and that creepy music, really just helped to set the tone for this game. And don't pay attention to the choppiness of my video quality. The game itself runs smooth as butter, but my recording has been super off lately and I'm not sure why. I'm going to have to look into that. It never crashed on me or froze or anything, so the stability was pretty strong as well. And this game does something interesting with its gameplay. So basically, from what I can tell you, you play as a piece of paper figurine that gains sentience and has psychic powers. Okay, following so far. But then it takes, a bit, it takes it a bit further by giving you different types of origami forms you can change into. Need to make that extra large jump? Then you learn how to turn yourself into a frog and make that jump. Need to get through this little tube? Then transform into a crumpled up piece of trash and roll out. Get it? Transform and roll out? No? Ah well. Anyway, need to get across that extra large gap that the frog jump just can't make? Well then, just transform into a paper airplane and guide your way to freedom. Side note, if you hear anything in the background, I apologize, my dog is being super annoying today. So anyway, as you progress, as you progress through the game, uh, you gain new transforming abilities that will help you to solve the puzzles and navigate yourself through this dystopian world, which, honestly, I'm not so sure about. I mean, for the most part, it looks like you might be living in some kind of post-apocalyptic future, but... I mean, there's a train that shows up, and it's still activating and moving and whatnot, and you have to avoid it, so I honestly don't know what's going on here. What I do know is that there is a massive spider the size of a freaking tiger chasing after you for no reason. I mean, that spider is big. I don't think that my little paper guy is that small, like, so there's no way that there's a spider that big. My arachnophobia was not amused. So, overall, the gameplay was actually fun and engaging, along with the really well-done atmosphere. It's a unique take on games like this, but still sticking to the overall tried and true method that other games in this genre normally tend to take. And don't worry too much about the puzzles, just don't be afraid to search everywhere and you'll eventually figure them out and move on. This coming from someone who's normally really bad at puzzles, yet I was able to figure them out. You know, for the most part. One of them just kind of, I just kind of kept guessing until I got it, you know, but, but still, it was, it was the colors one, the one, the color pipes or whatever. I couldn't find the blue pipe to save my life. Anyway, uh, enough guessing, I, I, I figured it out. Okay, so now we're going to go on to the negatives. As soon as I started, the game... <sighs> Some weird things started happening. I was getting hit with error after error messages, and I barely paid attention to them, even though I probably should have. And I couldn't really figure out what the issue was. Uh, along with that, the game was trying to open and connect to my VR drive. You know, the, the, the Steam VR thing? I mean, what? Why? You can't even use VR here. And it keeps happening. Why does it keep happening? Ev I mean, every freaking time I try to open the game, it's like my computer's having a stroke and trying to open up VR, but... It's what? Another thing that really, excuse my language, pissed me off in the beginning was the game telling me to use a gamepad. I am so freaking sick and tired of this stuff. As soon as I saw this, I was upset, just immediately. Another freaking game developed, sold, and marketed for PC, but forcing people to use a gamepad. What about people who don't have one? 
or who don't know how to set it up, or people who just don't want to. Well, these developers and this game and all the others like it tell you all to F off. Apparently, they don't want your money. I hate this. Absolutely hate it. However, I will say one thing. Despite not being optimized for PC controls, they still work. They aren't awkward or annoying. Okay, maybe at certain points they can be a little annoying. But overall, it shouldn't affect your overall gameplay experience. Overall, the controls were still, for the most part, fine. But it does get really frustrating for me. And I'm sure there are some people out there who can completely understand where I'm coming from. And there's probably some people out there who think I'm being ridiculous and crazy. Sorry, that's just my own personal opinion. That's how I feel. And, but yeah, so, okay, so overall, that's it I've got for the negatives. I mean, I tried really, really hard to find anything else, but I couldn't. I couldn't really think of anything else negative to say about the game. Uh, the only problem I could think of is that the volume was a little low, but in the options menu, which, by the way, the options can only be accessed from the main menu, you can upgrade, the, you can increase the volume, so there's that. But other than those two things and that one really stupid minor thing at the end about sound that I just mentioned, there's, I couldn't think of anything. The game ran pretty well. It was it had a, a a tutorial for this kind of game. Doesn't make a lot of sense, but they still included a kind of tutorial, basically telling you what buttons do what, and in a in a very vague way telling you what you need to do to progress forward and thus help you learn the game, which was very much appreciated. But overall, yeah, there's not a whole lot bad I can say about this game. I mean, I think that if you're into games like this, then you're really going to enjoy this one. It's appropriately priced, perfectly priced, in my own personal opinion, and its quality, for the most part, is pretty top-notch. The game has great atmosphere and a fun gameplay mechanic in terms of shape-shifting and puzzle-solving. Its theme and mood are perfect, and the mystery and the curiosity is there as well. So yeah, if you're into things like this, I think this game is pretty darn good. It's not really for me, but that's besides the point. I'm still going to highly recommend this. But if you're not usually a fan of this kind of stuff, then I wouldn't bother simply because it's just the same thing those other games have done before, but with a transformation mechanic. So if you're not into these kind of things, you're not going to be into this one. But yeah, that's all I got to say. Uh, it's pretty good. If you like it, go get it. Go play it. Uh, if you're not into this stuff, then just pass on by. You probably weren't paying attention to this anyway. So that's all the time I got for this video, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it or at least found it informative. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks again for watching, and I can't wait to see you all again on my next adventure. So until then, I bid you all farewell.